Lazy D here. Today I'm working on this 2008 Dodge Ram Cummins pickup. Uh, a family friend said he took it to a shop. They told him he needs a turbo, so he actually reached out for me to quote replacing the turbo for him. I asked him how he got to this diagnosis. He kind of explained it to me. He took it to a local shop. They put they put their scan tool on it and said it had a low boost code and recommended a turbo to him. So I'm not just gonna order a turbo without doing my own diagnosis. It's a lot of work to replace a turbo on one of these trucks. So it's definitely worth taking the time to do your own diagnosis whenever you're working on anything for anyone. It can put you in a bad spot if you put a bunch of money and time into a vehicle trying to fix it and someone else's diagnosis wasn't right. So he says it's been in limp mode. I'm gonna start it up and try to drive it, see if I notice anything, inspect the vehicle real good, and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, as we can see, the truck has 187,000, almost 188,000 miles on it. I'm gonna go ahead and start it. And we got very low fuel, check engine light, TPMS light. So what we're concerned with right now is the check engine light. I'm gonna go ahead and move this across my yard here. I don't know if you'll be able to hear it in the video, but I can hear a bit of a little I can hear a little bit of air whooshing under the hood. This might be a sign that there's a boost leak. I'm gonna basically <laughs> I'm not gonna boost launch it, but I'm gonna hold the brake and the gas, try to get the turbo to spool a little bit and see if I can hear anything. I hear a slight whooshing here, air, air leak noise. So I'm gonna scan it before I do my inspection just to see what codes are in here. So here's my two codes that are probably the priorities here. So P226B, boost pressure too high, dash mechanical, and P2262, turbocharger, boost pressure not detected, mechanical, stored. So I'm still gonna do my inspection. We'll go from there. Okay, I've got the hood up. I'm just gonna kind of look around. It's hard to see on camera, but I'm gonna look at the whole turbo, I guess you'd call it the intake and turbo system. From the intake to the charge pipes and the connectors on those pipes over to the throttle body and intake horn. To try to get a good idea of what's going on here. One thing I noticed right off the bat is both these batteries have super corroded terminals, which can be a problem on modern vehicles that really depend on a lot of, like, of electronics. So I'm gonna go ahead and look around. I don't see anything super obvious yet. I'm gonna keep at it. So my visual inspection hasn't really netted me anything. Another thing I noticed is down here on top of the high pressure fuel pump rodent turds. This is a common occurrence, but it's another clue that it might be some wiring damage as opposed to a mechanical problem. My next step here is I'm gonna take this uh, intake off. So I'm gonna pop these two sensors out, get this hose clamp off here, and then there's a 5 16 hose clamp down there. So I'm gonna take that off and I'm just gonna do a visual inspection of the compressor side of the turbo. I've gotten everything loosened up on this air box and here's another issue. So these retaining clips, I believe there's, normally there's at least two. There might be three of these, but one is missing. So without this clip here, when this turbo really starts sucking in this corner here, you can see I can pull up on it even with it clipped, you're gonna suck in dirty air. So that's not a good sign. So I wouldn't be surprised if when we look at this, turbo it looks like the compressor wheel's been sandblasted 
this is the inner cover, inner upper cover of the air box. And you can see along this edge where that clip wasn't, that there's dust that's been coming in. It's not as much as I thought it could have been, but it is, uh, that's significant over time to let unfiltered air into your engine. Here's looking at the inside of the turbo compressor wheel. It seems to spin all right, which is good. I don't feel any radio play, maybe a tiny bit, which would be normal. And axial play, which is in and out, I don't feel any. So I don't see a big problem here yet. There's definitely a bunch of oil in there. I'm not sure if that's from the turbo uh, seals or, or the turbo bearing seals or from maybe the crankcase ventilation system. I'll have to look a little bit more into it. I've hooked up this charge air system tester. This clamps on to the turbo inlet on the compressor side and allows you to charge the whole compressor, the charge air system from the turbo all the way over to your cylinder head to look for leaking boost hoses, broken intercoolers, or any other leaks you might have. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the air on on this. Regulate it to about 20 PSI. I'm gonna shut this off and it should hold pressure longer than that. So this is indicating we have a boost leak somewhere. I'm gonna leave this on, get some soapy water, spray it around anywhere, try to listen for uh, air leaks and see if I can find what's leaking. So I found my air leak here coming through the charge air system. It's coming out of our crankcase. I don't know if you can hear it here, but this means one of two things. Either the turbo bearing seals are blown out and there's pressure leaking from there into the crankcase or the piston rings are leaking pretty bad and it's getting in from there. So I'm gonna continue my diagnosis. I'm gonna try to verify it. By, I'm gonna pull this uh, oil supply line off the turbo and try the test again and see if I get air coming out of there. I pulled this line off. I had to back up this nut down here. It's a 19 millimeter and then use a 13 16, which I believe is 21 on the top here to break it loose. I compressed the system like I was doing and no air came out from the turbo side, but it pushed oil through from the crankcase. So I'm gonna continue my diagnosis. I don't think the turbo is leaking. So I got the compressed air hooked up, charging the system. I got the pressure regulated to about 25 PSI and I'm spraying soapy water around all the connections. And what I've found so far, see if I can get a, down there I've already sprayed. I'm gonna spray some more and you'll see. So there's a boost leak there. So I gotta try to address that. I might just tighten it up, see if I can get that to stop. Could be part of the problem. I've also come around, I've sprayed all around the intercooler. There's a plastic shield here that is held in by a couple push-in clips. I pulled those out and I'm just spraying around everywhere where the system is boosted. And I don't see any other leaks, which is good, but I'm spraying everywhere. Anywhere there's a connection in the air system, I'm spraying. And looking for leaks. Got my ratchet wrench here. I'm gonna tighten this up. I don't have any air going to it right now. I'll tighten this up and then charge it back up again. See if the air bubbles stop. Here we are after tightening. The boost leak has gone away. So. I'm gonna test drive this unit now that this boost leak has been corrected and see if the problem has been resolved. I kind of get a feeling it's not going to be, but it's worth a shot. I definitely found a problem and we've 
repaired it. So I've cleared the codes. I got this put back together after I fixed that boost leak. I'm gonna use my scan tool <clears throat> to look at the data while I drive. I'm gonna go drive this truck. Boost pressure here, you can see right now, it says it's in PSI and it's at 13.4. That's not what we had expected idle. So that probably means that this gauge is reading absolute pressure, not gauge pressure, which means it's accounting for atmospheric pressure. So, I'm gonna put this on a graph here. And I'm gonna go drive this. So I'm gonna take off out of my driveway here. I'm not gonna go crazy. I'm just gonna do normal driving for now. So we can see our boost pressure has gone up a little, only a couple pounds of boost. So if atmospheric pressure is 14.7 uh, PSI and we're at 18, that means like maybe three and a half pounds of boost. Tires make a lot of noise on this truck, or mud tire. Yeah, I'm coming around a turn here. Once I hit this straightaway, I'm gonna give it wide open throttle and uh, see what happens with the boost pressure. There's a lot of delay there. It did spool up. We got up to 40, which would be like 25 pounds-ish of boost. I think that's probably about normal for a stock truck. It might be a little low. I did get some weird noise coming from the engine area. I'm not sure if that picked up on the video. It didn't sound great. I'm gonna go ahead and do another wide open. So I'm from 40 miles an hour, basically 35 miles an hour on level ground. The engine revs. It feels like it makes all right power, but it definitely does not sound good from the turbo area. So I've finished my road testing. I've obviously, like everyone else does, kind of compared the information I have with what other people on the internet and in forums and YouTube videos have diagnosed when they have similar codes and symptoms to what I'm experiencing. And I'm pretty confident at this point it's the turbo. I talked to the customer, I kind of gave him a quote. It was a little bit out of his budget right now. So what I'm gonna do to try to get him by as best I can is I'm gonna, I advise since there was so much oil leaking in through the crankcase breather to replace at least at the minimum the crankcase breather filter. So we're gonna do that. And uh, a lot of the forums say, if you're having problems to leave your uh, engine brake on or your exhaust brake on all the time. So I told him to run it like that. Maybe it'll clear up, but it sounds to me like something in the VGT is either loose or stuck based on the noise I'm hearing when I'm giving it wide open throttle. So maybe down the road, I'll do a video if this guy saves up his money and wants to replace it, but it can be pretty expensive you know, by the time you buy a decent quality turbo, and I'm not gonna advise anyone to buy one off of Amazon, that's for sure. Get a decent quality turbo from a reputable manufacturer or distributor, install it, change your engine oil, and have to drain out some coolant, maybe put, you know, maybe flush your coolant, and then, you know, five, six hours of labor, it can add up to, you know, four or five grand, maybe more. So anyway, I'm gonna put this back together and that's it for this one. Hopefully this is helpful, maybe diagnosing your truck. A couple other things I'm gonna address while I have it, because I hate to see something leave with something, you know, with stuff that's not exactly right, is I'm gonna clean off these batteries and I'm gonna put a clip on the air box. I have a spare one off the stock air box in my pickup. I'm gonna put it on there and just check the fluids real quick. It sucks if you work on something for someone and they take it and it immediately fails after they leave for something, even if it's completely unrelated, you just had it, could have looked at it. So I just take the extra time. Maybe I might just wash out this engine bay real quick. You know, why not? The guy's gonna pay for a diagnosis. I might as well spend a little time cleaning up some loose ends for him. If you found this video useful or helpful, give me a like, comment, subscribe. Thanks.